Hello, it's story time. We're now reading part three of A Green Knight Terraforming Company, Late Payment. And here we go. I didn't hear, see, smell, or taste anything in the next 10 minutes. But when I went to sit down near Timmy and Tommy, the two rats stood up. They had smiles on their faces with teeth exposed. The teeth didn't make me feel better. They looked more predatory than kind. The two of them gripped my elbows and marched me out the door with, uh, we have business with Miss Frigg. They shut the door in my face and I was shocked. They were cutting me out. Me, that had got me into, got them into Miss Frigg's office in the first place. I conveniently ignored the implied fact that Miss Frigg already knew the rat thugs. I bumped into Donald, my partner, who had a glass tube that reminded me of a paper towel tube. He was bent over with a tube against the door and his ear on the other end, trying to eavesdrop. I must have snorted because Donald hissed. Shh! Can you hear anything? Donald straightened and looked at me with an expression that told me I wasn't going to like what he said. No, because the room is shielded. The rats are shielded, and Miss Frigg is shielded. Damn, everyone is shielded except you. Or was that shielded? Except you. His voice rose an octave. Why don't you sit in the corner and practice your shielding? I grabbed the glass tube out of Donald's hand and put it up to the door. I could hear bits and pieces of muffled sound. This doesn't work, I said, and threw it. Donald made one of those impossible leaps and held the tube against his chest. He gave me a glare. Now, I am not the most subtle of people, but I do read a lot of body language doing my job. My real job and not this call center bullshit. So I backed away from Donald and sat down in my cube. I turned on the monitor, checked the call board inside. Donald would tell me if he heard something interesting or not. Donald had a new toy, and I didn't have one. Donald was really worried about Army, or I was an idiot. I grinned. So you need a battery. Where did you get that? Ancient technology. You haven't been on a prescribed planet? Nine volt batteries will not power your terraforming unit. And I've only seen nine volt batteries on Earth. No, it won't. I continued talking to the green-faced, almond-eye-shaped alien in front of me. I silently hit the red button under the desk. You've been on the blue planet. The earth alien blinked slowly and the image blinked out. A job well done, I growled at Donald telepathically and he bit back with shielding. The green alien probably thought he could get away before a team could find him. Not on my watch, I laughed. The greenies were kind of stupid. A 9 volt battery? Even Earth's den Denizens didn't use that, didn't use them much anymore. I quit answering the calls and instead pulled up the library. We had access to the library so we could research our callers. I know I wasn't supposed to use it outside work parameters, but it was time to research Miss Frigg. I wanted to know if we could trust her. The door to Miss Frigg's office had the look and feel of an old oak tree carved in arcane symbols. I casually mentioned to Donald that I saw them and even asked him what they meant. But he couldn't see them. Only I could see the symbols. It was an indication that Miss Frigg was from Earth. A little research into her history and it just didn't make any sense. No Earthling could live a few hundred years and look that good. It was the first error that I had seen in the Cosmo Crowd's history collection. <clears throat> in the back of my mind, I could hear zzz, zzz. In the past, Earthlings had learned how to go, how to use electric shocks to kill flies. <coughs> Excuse me. This sounded like one of them. I looked up from the monitor. Donald was glued to the door. The glass tubes that had been in his hand had dropped to the floor. Good thing to remember. The tube may have been glass, but it didn't break from a little rough use. Donald was whimpering, and I could see his hair floating around his head. I pulled my belt off and made sure I wasn't touching the buckle. It took some flexibility, but I got the belt around his waist and pulled. 
A loud scream came, finally came out of Donald's mouth and then shut off. He lay on the ground, pale and panting. What happened? Miss Frigg, I said, has protections. I put my fingers around his wrist and tested his pulse. Donald's pulse was strong and healthy. I was already going from erratic to smooth. Once he was calm, I helped him to his feet and to the chair. So, did you hear anything? Donald was still gasping, but he got out a word. No. Miss Friggs' door opened and the two rats walked out. They gave us a grin and went out the entranceway. Were we the only ones who hadn't known that the rats were her informants? Miss Frigg looked at the two of us. Donna was lying on the floor like a landed fish. She gave us the come here finger and shut the door. I jerked Donald up on his feet. He shuffled behind me. I gave him first crack at opening the door. He just shuddered at me with full confidence that I wouldn't be the next electro electrocuted flopping fish victim. I grabbed the door and pulled it open. Miss Frigg sat at her desk, rifling through a bunch of papers. She looked up and pointed to two chairs. Donald sat down. She first directed her comments to Donald. You have a much better constitution than most men. Then she looked at me. Donald didn't object to the word man, although with anyone else he made sure they called him by his race. Man was a derogatory word in the cosmos because it meant humans on the blue planet. I suggest, she continued, that you get checked out by my personal physician afterwards. Then she looked at me. From the way her eyes were flashing, I was sure that she was going to roar at me again. I waited. No reason to be cowed. I would yell at you, she said, but I know you'll enjoy it. Damn. So I waited for it. Why didn't you come to me with this? With what, I asked. The asteroid, the earworms. Her hand trembled a bit when she set the papers down. They were my first case. Does anyone here understand the word gobsmacked? Well, I was gobsmacked. Hell, Miss Frigg had had many, had been a special cases team. She hadn't always been the call center goddess. She might know what she was doing. The idea that management might know what they were doing shocked me as much, so much, that I didn't hear the rest of what she said. Joe, she said, Tiny, Donald corrected her. You know I hate that name. I wanted to smack Donald on the back of his head, but I refrained. Tiny, did you even hear what I had to say? Think, 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 think. You said you're going to save the earworms? She gave me a crooked smile and set the papers on the desk. Here's what I want you to do. It was a real disappointment when Miss Frigg assigned me the call center. I would have enjoyed it knowing all and sundry, but just because Miss Frigg was right didn't make it any easier for me. They'll be watching you, Miss Frigg smiled. She knew that I wanted to be part of the rescue party. They will be following you. I want to catch all the people involved with the snafu. So it looked like I wasn't going to be the rescue party. But she was right. Ermie, Hammy, and the rabbit were in Miss Frigg's office. If Ermie wasn't so focused on saving his father, mother, siblings, grandparents, and generational grandparents, earworms live a long, long time. He would have been sniggering at my discomfort. I was action-oriented. I like to be out in the field. I was not a damn spy. But that was my role. I was kind of impressed that Miss Frigg had ways to get people in and out of her office. When I went over to the secret passage to see if I could use it for recon, she gave me a full toothy smile that chilled my bones. The visions of toilet paper and balloons filling her office with glitter abruptly left my mind. For all I knew, she lived and slept in that room. The Cosmos crowd were, was into furniture that turned into walls. I used to call that design futuristic until I had to live in it. Now I just called it boring. See, my mind is always working. It's why I need a job where I am moving so that my brain doesn't annoy me. 
I was ushered out of the room. Hammy and Ermy were working on a new holographic computer that talked to them in Miss Frigg's voice. And then I was out the door. My cube was stale, white, and I couldn't bear to turn that communication terminal on. I walked past it and headed for the elevator. I called it an elevator, but it worked on some principle that used science that was far above human tech. It was a box floating on air. I punched in a code and I swooped back to the main station. If they were watching me, I would give them something to do. I'm not a reflective man. Which is another reason I hate enforced inactivity. I enjoyed solving problems and kicking ass. I mean, who wouldn't? It was my kick ass talents that had got me a job with the company. Donald had told me repeatedly that on any world in the cosmos I would have been either king or crime boss. I considered that a compliment. Today I was a minion and I wasn't liking it. I stopped to look out the porthole into the vast void sprinkled with planets and stars. I call them windows but once again they were built with a science that was more than my mind could comprehend. I could troubleshoot it of course. Any technician could with the right tools. A hand touched my shoulder and I quickly turned around and faced a lovely woman. She was humanoid, definitely alien though, dressed in overalls. Almost thought she was another human until I saw the sheen on her face. It wasn't skin, it was some type of biometal, I presumed. Yes, they'd been watching me and one of them had just made contact. And this is the end of part three, and I will continue the story in part four.